Welcome back YouTube. So on this episode, I'm going to be working on the E36 once again. Can't keep my hands off this damn car. It's always going to be something going on with it. But um, on this episode, I'm going to be doing aesthetic slash performance mod. Yes, both those can go together. And the homies at Chase Bays usually got both those covered. So uh, as you guys probably read on the title, you already know what this is going to be about. So I got a uh, tucked radiator from them. Let's get into the details of that. All right, so here we have the Chase Bay's tucked radiator for the E36, and this thing looks absolute quality. So, yes, I got it for the tuck portion of it, and that's basically because on the stock E36 setup, it's basically two inches in front of the core support, which leaves you with no clearance between the E-fan and, like, the water pump. And, I mean, with the whole Shea Bay theme, like, I don't really want to have the front end of my car looking all clustered up like this with the expansion tank and uh, this extra hose and all that, so... I feel like the Chase Bay's radiator is really going to clean up the front of the car and kind of help facilitate the whole Shea Bay theme of my uh, E36. Cool, so we have the aesthetics checked off. What about performance? So to be honest with you, I haven't had any overheating problems with my current setup. It is a eBay uh, aluminum radiator with the shroud and e-fan. So this thing's held up fine for me and all that. But the Chase Bay's radiator is a dual pass radiator, which let me explain that. So basically what I gather from a uh, brief uh, internet reading about what dual pass radiators do and what uh, they facilitate is basically it's two radiators welded together and there is a baffle in the middle of it. So the fluid has to travel extra distance before it exits out, which the more air that's hitting the radiator, the cooler the coolant's going to get. So on a normal radiator, it's just in and out real quick and your coolant isn't really cooling down as much. So the dual pass should be a uh, considerable improvement over what I have on it. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of what a dual pass radiator does. If anybody knows more about it in the comments, drop your knowledge. I'd love to hear about it. But anyways, other than that, instead of having an expansion tank, we're also going to be swapping to a little bit more of an old school design. So this is just a uh, pressure cap. So essentially just fill this up until the bubbles are out of the system, close this off. And then if you have any excess pressure or excess fluid, you will have a um, overfill. And I'll just probably shoot down over here, kind of hide that out of the way. But... Nice and simple, gets rid of the expansion tank, so makes it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more simple. Also, I gotta to touch on the option I chose for the barb. So from Chase Bays, you could just run normal hose set up with like silicone or rubber, and that's gonna be like a 1.5 inch uh, fitting right here. I opted for the Dash 20 AN fitting because I wanna run an AN hose, obviously. So with that, yes, I'm gonna to have to remove my uh, thermostat housing cut off the end and uh, weld on and bungs right there to make all that work. But I think it'll be a nice touch. I haven't seen much people do it with E36s. So yeah, I opted for the Dash 20. And other than that, I also have a uh, E-Fan sensor right here and that's, uh, they also supply that. So make sure you get that order. I think it's like 20 bucks. They have it on their website. So enough of me blabbing for a minute. I'm gonna actually get into the disassembly of the front end of my car. And yes, it's kind of required on it. Um, it's not really just a pull out the old radiator and drop in the new one type job. So headlights have to come off, nose panel have to come off, bumper, uh, bumper supports, just so we could get in there because I believe you do have to make some small cuts on the core support to make it actually fit. So let's get into it. Right, guys so front end of the car is off now so now all i really need to do is uh drain the coolant get all the coolant out of it i could pull the radiator off from there uh, pull off the thermostat housing and then uh start uh start on install all right so i'm gonna actually just reuse my old coolant because it's pretty new still so uh we got a gallon jug put a hole in it funnel break that loose drain it into there that fills up got another jug so extraction time
All right, guys, got the radiator out. Everything's drained. And where I'm at right now is removing the coolant hard pipe that's underneath this uh, water neck. Um, basically, to do that, there's one little 10 millimeter bolt right there. So I have to remove the water pump uh, pulley, remove that, pull that out. And then basically, the fix with this is since we're not going to have an expansion tank anymore, is a uh, freeze plug. So <clears throat> that's going to get capped off and no longer have a uh, pipe right there. All right, so we've got that bottom uh, filler hard pipe removed. Now I'm just gonna disconnect the Vanos connector right here, move that out of the way, and then I believe the water neck for the thermostat housing is just uh, one, two, three bolts. Remove those and basically pull this out. So it's just held in by the three bolts and then a uh, O-ring back here. So once this gets removed, obviously I'm gonna have to get these uh, welded for the end fittings. Other than that, that'll help me get a clearance so I could actually tap in the freeze plug right here. All right, she's putting up a little bit of fight and that's just because the pipe that connects to that should have retained inside of it and instead it got stuck to this one. So I'm gonna have to try to uh, twist this part out so that, it, that this part's free from this pipe. So right now it's getting caught up on the back right here and it's not actually releasing out. All right, thermostat housing removed. A little gunky right there. I'll clean that up before uh, everything gets installed again. But here's a little thing that got caught up. So this pulled out with the thermostat housing instead of retaining into the pipe. Luckily, I got an O-ring kit because uh, these were a little damaged. So swap these out before I install it and everything will be Gucci. Okay, so if anybody else is going to be doing something similar to this, which is uh, blocking off the water neck, that's usually the filler and doing a similar radiator setup to what I have going on. This is a 23 millimeter freeze plug or a 29 30 seconds, I believe is the equivalent to that. So I'm just gonna tap this in with a socket that is about the same size as the outside diameter of it. And that should go right in. So I'll report back after this is pressed in. All right guys, got all that knocked out. I am now moving on to the thermostat housing. So I'm gonna lop these off. These are the old uh, hose barbs basically and I'm gonna hope that this dash 20 bung fits with inside this housing without any uh, weird things I have to do so I personally don't own a TIG welder I have a homie that's really good at TIG welding so tomorrow I'm gonna take it over there get that all knocked out and then the water next portion of this will be all done a little update on the water flange got the and fitting in so I had to like kind of chamfer the inside so that the uh, 20 and bunk would actually fit inside there so might have to grind a little bit more away because this is kind of like tapped in right now, but this is looking pretty good. Got it all cleaned up and ready for uh, TIG welding. Just got to finish off this side and this will be pretty much uh, done and ready to be uh, welded. So I'm going to take a little break from uh, grinding and using my Dremel and grinding on that freaking water neck. So right now I'm going to be working on actually mocking up the radiator. So I have a uh, roughly positioned where it's going to go. Um, Right now, all I gotta do is drill a hole in this little uh, mounting tab so that this uh, bottom set of threads could actually bolt on right there. Same with that side. From there, I'm um, just gonna kind of position it until this fits slightly underneath this lip. And I don't know, so far it's looking like a really easy install. You know, knock on wood, but uh, that was too easy. Literally just drilled a hole there a hole on that side bolted it up and i don't think i have to clearance anything so got the pressure cap right here it's kind of tucked underneath here but yes i'll be able to remove it because once it's loose it's actually facing like that so that's all looking gucci um right here is gonna be a little close for the hose to work with the and fitting but i think i'll be able to get it to work especially if i kind of angle this the and barb into the direction of this I think it'll be all good. So, so far this whole install is going really smooth. The next day. All right guys, day two, about to get started on this. Hopefully get it finished today. Um, really just gotta cut off this end, take it to my homie that has a welder, get that all welded up. Um, I kind of have everything mocked up in a place where it's going to be routed. So that's going to go there. Bottom hose, connect like that. Pretty self-explanatory. So I have the E-fan connected. Now I just got to do the radiator temp sensor which uh, is all the way over here. So I'm gonna have to like unsheathe that, 
bring it over and kind of do different um, connectors on the end. But yeah, everything's looking really good right now so far. Um, I do have a ton more clearance than what I used to have. So the E-Fan used to pretty much almost hit the water pump right there. Now I probably have a good six, seven inches between that. So looking solid, loving it so far. Now, if any of you guys are actually gonna get this radiator, this is one thing I highly recommend doing. So on the E-Fan, we're to attach this to the radiator. So basically what they want is for you to fish a nut behind here, which is like barely a finger gap. Total pain in the ass. I tried doing that for like a good 15 minutes before I said, screw it. I'm just gonna do a rib nut right there. So a lot easier for me to remove it and install. So yeah, just rib nut on all four, easy install. All right guys, so I got the flange with me, got the two bungs, heading over to my homie's house right now. I'm gonna get that all welded up. Probably get a couple B-roll shots of him welding it. Um, I wish I had my own TIG welder, but uh, not there yet. So thankful I have a homie that'll do all this for me. So let's pick up the video when I get there. Yeah? Right. I like that fucking. All right, guys, back at the garage, got the flangel welded up, and check it out. So, pretty damn good-looking welds, in my opinion, especially for a cast aluminum job. I mean, it's hard to get absolutely perfect on that, but I'm going to spray this with a little bit of a spray paint, get it nice and silver-looking again, and slap this back on the car. So, goddamn, that is looking good. Super stoked how that came out, and... Um, I apologize I didn't get this on video earlier, guys, but it did do the upper and lower radiator hoses already, so world shortest and hose. This thing's freaking tiny, but it's exactly the size I needed to make it actually work in that tight spot. Got the lower one right here. This one has a little bit more flex to it, so that's good, but uh, pretty much all I got left right now is connect the hoses. That's easy. Those just have to be, like, snug up. Other than that, I already have the E-Fan wired up. And now we're just going to do the, what is this called, the temperature switch for the E-Fan. So normally on the E36, it's way over on this side. So all I got to do is drop down this harness, cut it down, and pretty much connect it right there. All right, guys. So this upper and lower hose both connected. So this is essentially the end product other than the front end not being on. But goddamn, that looks bitching. So all that's left is to fill it with coolant now, and I'm gonna use this little Amazon um, filler kit. So it's just a elevated funnel, so it's gonna make this easier to actually bleed since this is still technically lower than my thermostat housing. So sticking that in like that and filling this all the way up, this will now be the highest point. Thus, I should be able to get all the bubbles out of the system, no problem. Okay guys, so last clip you saw I spilled a bunch of coolant and I was topping it off with the coolant and I was going through it in the bleeding process of getting this whole radiator bled out. And fast forward a few days, the car is complete. So I'm sure I don't really need to explain or show you on video how to bleed a radiator. It's pretty self-explanatory. So basically all I did was fill that little bleeder up with coolant, uh, let that drip all the way down, turn the car on, let it cycle through. Um, the pressure is obviously going to make it rise up. So after you turn the car back off, it's going to kind of sink down. So fill again. And once it's done sucking up coolant, this thing was pretty much Gucci and ready to go. So made sure I tested it. I've drove the thing probably two or three days now and got no leaks, got no problems. Uh, holds perfect temp, fan kicks on when it should. So install complete. Now I know that the second half of this video probably got a little choppy and my bad on that. Um, this did take me about a week to do just because I had limited time to really work on it. So maybe an hour here, hour there. Also waiting on the homie with the welder to actually respond back. So it wasn't as linear of a process as I was hoping for, but I think the only thing I really left out on the video is I did chop the crank pulley, AKA what the AC belt used to ride on. So normally this is like a double pulley right here. I did take an angle grinder to that, chopped it off, um, smoothed it out, and then put some black paint on it. So before it came really close to this bottom hose, and I just didn't want to have that as a problem ever. So yeah, chopped the pulley, came out good.
But yeah, let me know what you guys think. So I saved a lot of room with this radiator, like I said earlier, like the E-Fan used to almost touch on the water pump right there. And now I could pretty much almost fit my foot in between there. So big improvement on aesthetics. Um, as far as I could tell, the performance is as good, if not better than what my old radiator is. So no complaints in that department. Um, I was worried it was gonna come close to my oil cooler right there, but got about a good inch between the two. So that's all solid. Also, there's one more thing I left off on camera. So I did do one other thing, non-radiator related. So I finally finished my quarter hood. This thing's looking absolutely baller. So I did wet sand, uh, complete compound polish it. Good enough to my standard. There's just no like orange peel or anything left on that. So um, with that, I also topped off this carbon emblem, which I got from K2 Industries. Nice baller, that's actual real carbon. So no fake shit here. So let me show you what this looks like on the car. All right, so I know I took this one out of a Volkswagen Kid cookbook. After all, I came from Volkswagens and I do have a quarter hood on that car. So I knew eventually I wanted one on the E36. I think they look cool. Um, does retain the factory hood lashes. So on the E36, you have two, nice and symmetrical. So you just press down on that, locks into place. Um, have took this thing up to like 65 already and it doesn't really move. So I'm personally not worried about the thing ever taking off on me, but who knows? Um, I did go one step further than what I originally did on the Mark IV, and that is boxing in the rear section of it. So instead of just having a jagged edge, I wanted to make it look a little bit more professional, a little bit more 3D, and I think it came out pretty good. Anywho, that's going to be the conclusion of this video, guys. So I just want to give a shout out to Chase Base for making dope stuff. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, other than that, I think I'm at like 970 subscribers, so... If you're watching and you're not subscribed, just hit that button for me. That'd be really dope. If I could get to a thousand after this video, I'll uh, probably not give anything away yet because I don't have anything to give away, but it would be much appreciated. So until next video, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.